Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are diving into a fascinating world of the human development. Especially today we are focusing on the development of the esophagus. Before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay updated on all our exciting contents. So let us dive right in. Hopefully, we all have the idea about the primitive gut tube. This is an endodermal tube. Um, that means this tube is totally made up of the endoderm. And this primitive gut tube has three parts, the foregut, the midgut, and the hindgut. The foregut extends from the oropharyngeal membrane to the liver outgrowth. So this portion is the foregut. Now, when the embryo is approximately 4 weeks old, a bud appears at the ventral wall of the foregut, known as the lung bud, or you can say the respiratory diverticulum. The portion above the lung bud is the pharyngeal gut. This pharyngeal gut is a part of the foregut. The pharynx will develop from this portion. And below the pharynx, we know we have the trachea in front and esophagus behind. So let us see what happens here now. You see this is the foregut, uh, a part of the foregut at the level of the respiratory diverticulum. So yep, this is the ventral portion and this is the dorsal portion. From the ventral portion you already saw in the previous picture a bud appears. This is the lung bud or the respiratory diverticulum and your respiratory system will develop from this bud and these corners you see of this bud these are the tracheoesophageal septum to separate the trachea from the esophagus they fuse with each other and separates the ventral portion i mean the future trachea from the dorsal portion the future esophagus so the tracheoesophageal septum ultimately separates the trachea from the esophagus all right now you have a separate pathway for your respiratory system and a separate digestive tract which is behind and there is something that you have to remember again we know there are um, different layers in the esophagus the mucosa the submucosa muscle layer and the serosa the mucosa again has the lining epithelium the lamina propria and the muscularis mucosa you can see my previous video um, to know more details about these layers now in my previous video i showed you that esophagus has the esophageal glands as well I also showed the muscles, the connective tissue, the vessels, etc. Now the primitive gut tube, I mean the foregut, forms the lining epithelium and the cells of the esophageal glands. Just these two things. As the foregut is an uh, endodermal tube, we can also say that this lining epithelium and the esophageal glands are coming from the endoderm. Now, please see this figure from the Langman's Embryology, the best book for learning embryology in my opinion. This figure shows this tube, this is the gut tube. The yellow portion represents the endoderm and the red color represents the mesoderm. We just now came to know that the lining epithelium and the cells of the esophageal glands are derived from this yellow portion, I mean from the endoderm. And the rest of the portion of the esophagus, I mean the muscles, the connective tissue, the vessels and the supporting structures of those glands, those esophageal glands, are derived from the surrounding red structure, also known as the mesoderm. Which mesoderm? A part of the lateral plate mesoderm. You see the lateral plate mesoderm again has two layers. One is the visceral layer which is surrounding this viscera. Another layer, the parietal layer, is lining the body wall. So I think you have already guessed that uh, these structures except the lining epithelium and the uh, some cells of the esophageal glands, all other structures of the esophagus are derived from this visceral layer of the lateral plate mesoderm, not from the parietal layer, okay? Now there are some specialities in the muscle. As we all know that esophagus has all the skeletal muscle in its upper one third, has both skeletal and smooth muscle in the middle part and has only smooth muscles in the lower third. 
The skeletal muscle of the upper portion is derived from the fourth and sixth pharyngeal arch, and the smooth muscle of the lower portion is derived from the surrounding mesoderm, the visceral layer of the lateral blood mesoderm. So that was a huge part. Now there is a very small thing to know. At first, the esophagus was very short, a tiny little tube, but with the descent of the heart and lung, the tiny esophagus lengthens rapidly and ultimately becomes the long muscular tube. So that is all and I hope this video helped you in your embryology study. If you enjoyed this video, do not forget to give a thumbs up, share it with your friends and leave a comment below with your thoughts. My next video will be on the esophageal atresia and esophageal stenosis. Until that time, stay curious and keep exploring the wonders of the human body.